Welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. Hi, welcome to Blind Owl Bushcraft and Survival. My name is Dan. I'm here in the Philippines, down here in the shop, and uh, I've got about 30 feet of thin jute twine. I'm twisting it up in the reverse twist method to eventually wrap around the handle of my my new bushcraft knife. Back in a minute. Alright, well I've got my knife here. I reverse twisted two pieces of jute twine into a nice tight rope and I'm using a whipping stitch here with the whip underneath the handle and I'm wrapping around tight. I have just enough string or cord, whatever you want to call it, to get to the end. I'll have about six inches of, of string left over. Looks very nice, absolutely, absolutely perfect. And then I will uh, coat it down heavy with rubber cement eventually. Back in a minute. Alright, well my first try here, I came up about one wrap short maybe two wraps short. Now I can shorten my little piece sticking out, put that right up at the edge and make my loop just barely enough to get a, a piece in there that might get me that last little bit to be able to tuck under the loop, I'm not sure. I might also start a eighth of an inch farther up the handle too rather than right here at the edge. That sucks. So I'll get it, try it again, guys, until I get it perfect. It's absolutely a beautiful handle. It is, it is absolutely perfect. The heavy, the, it's about a, let's say a little bigger than an eighth inch jute twine rope that I made. It is absolutely perfect for this knife here. It really looks nice and, and it fits my hand perfect so so I will try again, modify it just a little bit. The other option I have is and I might even do this, it depends how it's gonna look. I can actually add, I can splice in another piece of jute twine from a different roll. Hopefully it won't look too much different, and just put another six or eight inches on the rope then I can go from the very edge to the very top. I'm just I'm very close. Actually I need I need two more wraps there on the top. That's what I really need. And that would be perfect. So I guess I'm probably gonna rather than play games here and do it all over again, I think what I do will I what I'll do is I will splice in another eight or ten inches of jute twine. <laughs> This really turned into a lot of work, let me tell you guys. It took me over two hours to make this jute twine roll. My fingertips are just numb. Alright, back in a minute. Alright, well what I got so far is I have the handle on pretty good. And the next step is to put a couple drops of super glue around the edge on both ends. That keeps the edge from ever rolling off. Uh, again, like down here it can't because the wood gets a little bigger, but here the wood gets smaller, so it definitely needs it here. I have about six packages of super glue here. <coughs> Brand new packages sealed and inside them they're just hard as a rock. <laughs> I, I just can't win here guys, let me tell you. Uh, so I found a package of Mighty Bond instant glue. Still feels a little squeezable, I don't know. It's new and never been opened, so maybe this will work. I just need just a few drops around the edge. I don't want it on top of here because I don't want the, the super glue on top of the Jew twine. It gives it a real hard, glossy coating on it. I don't want that. But I, I want to cut off the, the ends here. I'm going to cut off the end here and the end over here. Just, just put a drop of 
super glue on the underside here so it's touching the wood. As you can see here, it would come apart real easy if you didn't. But it's real important. You just give them just a touch there. And I got a real nice tight wrap. So it's close to perfect. Then what you do is you rough it all up with your finger or whatever. And then take a lighter or a light torch or something like that and singe all the fuzz off of it. I'll use just a lighter for that. And then I'm going to use high quality sole attaching all purpose rubber cement. I'm using this brand here because this brand is clear. I got some other stuff called rugby that's kind of got a red tint to it. I like the clear better so it shows up the color of the Jew twine. And then we'll let it dry for a day or two. If needed, we'll put another coat on it, but usually you don't. Usually this stuff soaks in real nicely and uh, gives you basically a waterproof, slightly rubberized finish on the beautiful Jew twine handle. So I'll be back when I get that done. Okay, now I have the a little bit of super glue on the edges here. That Mighty Bond worked okay. Got it just, just enough on there, I think, to so it never slips off. Now, what I did was I kind of ran my thumb back and forth on the jute twine. It's kind of kind of fuzzy looking. And I'm just going to take a lighter and singe off all the fuzz. Don't want to burn it, just getting the fuzz off it. Now I'm going to go over it one more time with my thumb and just kind of brush it up one more time, rough it up one more time, whatever you want to call that. This will make a big difference on the way the rubber cement, or other thing you can do again, you can put super glue on this part here and it'll give it a real nice glossy hard coat, or use clear epoxy on it which will put an awesome coating on it too, but it's very slippery though. So it's pretty much roughed up again. You see it's not, it's not singeing near as much now. I used to always use a burns o -matic torch. It's up on the shelf, but I got a nice little jet liner, jet lighter. Gonna work just fine. Now we get all the fuzz off it I can. And the more you singe it, the darker it'll get. Give you a nice color when you're done. But I think that's just about it there. You can see it's not really sparking anymore, hardly at all. Okay, and the next step, slightly warm, the next step is to make sure it doesn't fall down and hit me on my foot or something, that would really suck. This knife is beyond shaving sharp. If you're ever going to do stuff like wrapping handles and stuff, you should always put tape on your blade. I, I didn't, again, uh, didn't cut myself or anything today, but sometimes you can. Had to wrap the handle twice. It's plastic off of here. Now this rubber cement here is pretty clear and will actually just kind of shine up the uh, jute twine which is kind of a natural natural look to it. And this is the messy part here. 
If you had rubber gloves or something, it'd be great. I, again, I, I have nothing. I have no supplies of anything, so I just use what I have, which is nothing. But I just I do things uh, as I need to, or whatever, however you want to call that. Cobble things together, I guess, is a good word for it. I'm trying to find something to stand it up a little bit here, but. It's not that big a deal. Okay, well what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put rubber cement on one finger and I'm just gonna basically rub it in real good. Let's see if I've got something to pour the rubber cement on. Usually I just tip the bottle over if I usually have the knife clamped in. But we'll just try it like this one, see how it goes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna Pour a little bit on here, just like that, see, nothing to it. I'm just going to rub it in with my finger. Now it doesn't matter if you get any on the wood or anything like that, because rubber cement, when it's dry, it turns into rubber, cut along it and it just peels right off. But I, I want a lot on here, I want it to soak in real good into the twine. Probably using a little too much, but it doesn't really matter again. I was trying to teach my daughter about enough the other day. Good enough, deep enough. It's an old Ron Wood joke. You guys know who Ron Wood is? I didn't know Ron Wood was a PhD doctor type guy. I had no idea. I watched his videos back about 15 years ago. Learned a lot of basic bushcraft stuff before I knew anything about bushcraft. I knew about the outdoors and you know camping and stuff like that, fire making and things, but I didn't know any of the fancy Terms and stuff like that. And make sure you get it real good on the ends because you want it, you want this sealed up so that it's, it's fairly waterproof. You don't want water soaking in underneath it. But that that's all there is to it right there, guys. I'm a little bit here where the string got pulled under, make sure that gets sealed real good. Then I'll come back later with a knife after it's all dry and I'll just scrape it off the wood. It'll just it'll just peel off. That's the same thing if you get this rubber cement on your fingers. You have a couple choices. You can use alcohol to take it off, but the easiest way is to wait 20 minutes till it dries and just rub your fingers back and forth and it peels off like rubber. Because that's what it is, rubber. Once the, I believe it's alcohol, it's probably in there, evaporates, it turns to rubber. But that's all there is to it right there, guys. That's a pretty fantastic looking handle, if you ask me. Now, I'm just going to let this dry overnight. You can take a heat gun to it. Don't, don't take a lighter to it. <laughs> You'll never put it out. Because... Uh, Rubber cement is highly flammable. Now, I did that whole thing. I got one finger dirty. I won't worry about it. Again, I'll wait 15 or 20 minutes and I'll just rub my fingers together and it'll all come right off. Because it, it'll just be dry rubber. Now I'm going to blink an eye at it. If you get epoxy on your fingers sometimes, you can't get it off. What I do is I take out baby powder and I put baby powder all over my the exposed glue where it's sticky and it's bugging you. And then after a while, it all kind of wears off on its own. That really, that really turned out nice, guys. So that's a homemade bushcraft knife from a cleaver, from beginning to end. And this is this is the end. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do different on this is over the weeks and months that follow, I'll work this bevel here up about another half inch, so it's about a full half inch to three quarter inch from the edge. And then I want to get that into one straight 
bevel all the way down. We're now it's still it's still just a little rounded here. It is razor beyond razor sharp. It's it's shaving sharp. It just if you saw my other video, the the last video, it just sliced the hair off my legs like it wasn't even there. So that's what I'm looking for. I don't I didn't try it on a piece of paper or anything like that. And the humidity of paper paper is pretty tough to cut, but but that that really turned out nice, guys. So that's all I have for now. This is my Equinox knife, and yesterday was the Equinox. It was finished. I had a nice fire and stuff for it, and uh, I don't know what to tell you. I really like it, and I'll show you once I get it. Next thing I have to do is I have to make a sheath for it yet, and the only thing I have for that is some PVC. I do have some Kydex, but I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm good enough with the Kydex to make a Kydex sheath. But the PVC sheets are pretty nice. But anybody anybody can make a knife. It just takes a little bit of time. I have about 45 minutes cutting out the the blade. Probably an hour with a right angle grinder to grind it into the right shape. Maybe 45 minutes on the edge. Two hours twisting up the reverse twist for twisting up the G twine rope, and about an hour and a half tying up because I had to do it twice. And then you just saw the glue. What's that? Five minutes or something like that, at the most. And a sheath will be another hour or so. But other than that, that's all there is to, to making it a good knife. Now this right here would be a perfect bushcraft knife. This is just about as heavy as my BK2, maybe a hair heavier. It's an inch longer than my BK2. This would be a perfect camp knife, field knife, survival knife. And it, the best thing about it is it has a big chisel grind on it rather than a double edge, so it's wickedly sharp. So until next time, guys, hashtag 22 a day no more. Go out have some fun. Watch your six really close in these wild times we're having now. And watch your back. Know what's going on all around you. So until next time, guys, just be safe. Thanks for watching. Oops.